and a Secret Service agent came into his office, hauled out a Colt 45 rifle thing, leaned over the table and put it in his face and said, we're taking the president now. And I said, Earl was good. <laughs> he was also sensible. They took the president's ball. <laughs> this was not as it should be. Number one, it broke the law. The autopsy should have been done in Texas. Secondly, it raised the question of uh, legal custody uh, of the, the evidence, in this case the body. And any real trial ever super vain, there might have been real problems in this context. The body, of course, as you know, was flown out that same day. An interesting sidelight, a man named Manchester decided that all the problem was with the evil people in Dallas. Everyone who lived in Dallas was a villain. Uh, just a matter of picking one at random and they would have been delighted to choose the president, which is basically the context of this book. And the worst of all the people in Dallas was Earl Rose, because he tried to take the body away from the heartbroken president's wife. An interesting side note, the next fall, a medical fraternity sent its freshman pledges out on a scavenger hunt. They had to get a copy of Manchester's book, Autopsied by Earl Rowe. They showed up at a department party we were, a dinner we were having, and Earl was having a good sense of humor. In fact, autographed a copy, despite the fact that he was pictured as much, much worse than a till of the hunt. He autographed the book. So somewhere in the world, there probably still exists a copy of Manchester's book autographed by Earl Rowe. Now, at this point, Lee Henry Oswald. He was first apprehended in Oak Cliff across the river in <coughs> Dallas proceeded to shoot and kill a policeman. He was later taken into custody. Uh, and a couple of days later, maybe on the 24th, he was being led out for his first judicial hearing. He was being led through the kind of parking area uh, in the bottom of the police building with each arm held by a plainclothes police officer, when Jack Ruby walks up right in front of him with a little snub nose revolver, sticks it in his front, and shoots him right in the middle of the police department. Lee Henry was, or was brought immediately to Parkland. The bullet had created catastrophic liver damage. Now, the liver is a hard organ to mess with, surgically. You've heard the old phrase, nailing jello to a tree. Well, suturing the liver is comparable. The liver is very friable and salty. Push your finger right through it. And, and the explosive force of the bullet that went through the liver created a, a, an almost insoluble surgical problem. What made it completely insoluble is it took out some of the hepatic vein. Remember at the upper back side of the liver, back here, several big veins exit from the liver, the hepatic vein. And they're short and they go right into the vena cava, the inferior vena cava. They were torn. Now you're talking about basically leaking all the blood from the polar system that goes into the liver. What you also got is there ain't any way to get there. The liver is attached to the diaphragm and the tiny veins are way back up here. You can't get there through the back, back, back muscles. And you basically can't get there from the front either. I don't know how the surgeons deal with this issue, uh, but it was impossible to stop the bleeding in the case of uh, Lee Henry Oswald, and he died on the operating table. He was brought to the operating room. Uh, 
uh, or from the operating room to the morgue, uh, an autopsy was done. Uh, and the autopsy room is, is L-shaped apartment. The body uh, refrigerators are here, and the autopsy room and the pathology dressing rooms are here. There's a door here to the hall, a door here to the hall, policeman here, policeman here, trying to keep the damn photographers out. Here was the nurse's dressing room. <laughs> I've never been in the nurse's dressing room, despite what you might think of my lecture of way. <laughs> and it turned out that there was a door from the nurse's dressing room into the autopsy suite. That door was always locked. I could have been through it. I didn't really play peekaboo with the nurses changing uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> we do know that number one, there was a policeman at both doors to the form. Somebody got in. The only one can think, I think they came in through the nurse's dressing room. Damn if they didn't get a picture of the body of Lee Henry Oswald on a gurney in our morgue and it appeared on one of those damn newspapers at the checkout stands of the grocery store, National Enquirer or something like that. Uh, we were mortified, humiliated. We did all we could, we just never thought of it. 